I'm Dave Kilmer, and I am very pleased to welcome back to our program Dr. Helene Huen, who is from Feet and Beyond. That's on Mountain Avenue in Hackettstown, and I'm going to let her give you all the, uh, the statistics on that. But Dr. Huen, on this program, as opposed to last program, last program we talked about some of the simple procedures that are used to eliminate foot pain. Foot pain, as you have said repeatedly, is not normal. A person that has foot pain should seek help because you can help them. So let's talk about some of the more serious problems. And before we do that, uh, let me have you give all the statistics as to where you're located, your phone numbers, et cetera, okay? Well, thank you, David. Thank you for having me again. Uh, we are um, located in uh, Hackestown. Our office uh, name is Feet and Beyond in New Jersey, uh, 188 Mountain Avenue in Hackestown. Um, our phone number is 908-576-0880. And uh, anyone who listens, you can always find us on the website. Uh, it's Feet and Beyond. It's F-E-E-T-N-B-E-Y-O-N-D.com. Now, let's talk about some of those more serious problems that you at Feet and Beyond can help a patient with. So uh, maybe, as we did in the last program, kind of a laundry list, but mm -hmm. let's talk about some of those things. Maybe the more common things you see that are more serious foot right. problems. Right. So the common serious problem, what I would call, is when the patients have hematol and bunion that didn't get taken care of. So when they waited for so long, it's progressing to more of more severe deformity. So we call it deformity because it changed the way you walk. It changed the way when the foot structure is different, it's affecting the knee, the hip, even the back. So when the serious net, what I consider is when it's affect a different part of the body beyond the foot. So the bunion is one of the most common kind because you change the way you twist your foot when you walk. Um, that is require some uh, a little bit more work than just a uh, shaved out the bone because it may need to realign the joint to give the structure is that how you born with. So now I'm interested, how does a bunion actually occur? I mean, certainly it grows and grows over time because it's a constant irritation. But how does a bunion begin to form? Bunion deformity is a very progressive condition. So uh, it's affecting uh, the patient's foot when the structure is become malfunction. And when that compensation happened due to their activities, their work uh, uh, activities or you know, like live activities, that would change the deformity, turn into the worsening case. That's when the big toes deviate outside, uh, outside of the foot, and uh, there's a big bump develop inside under instep area. So that is when uh, that we see that most of the patients come to the office. They start constantly have mm -hmm. blistering around the bunion, the bum itself. Whenever they bend the toe, they cannot bend the toe mm -hmm. anymore. And mm -hmm. so they, 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 uh, their uh, cartilage on the joint lining is become worn out. So they would get to the point that's almost like arthritic joint, that the, the toe not be able to bend itself properly anymore. So that's when it's, uh, I, I would consider as more serious. And, you know, with that, any of conservative option between like, you know, uh, range of motion, exercise, uh, change to wider shoes, even wear orthotics, supportive orthotic is no longer help. I have even patients come in, they have cortisone injection in the joint because the joint is so painful when they walk. But does that really help the conditions? No, it just calms down the inflammation process. Or maybe provides a provides short term, short -term uh, correction. relief, relief. To the pain. Yeah, exactly. Do shoes cause bunions? I mean, wearing improper shoes over a period of time, can that cause a bunion? Um, that is actually one of the myths. A lot of patients say, oh, I wear bad shoes when I grow up. I wear high heels when I grow up. Mm -hmm. That's why I have bad bunion. It's yes and no, because the bunion is formed by the, the faulty foot structure at the get-go. So it doesn't matter how supportive the shoe is, it's still going to be bothered mm -hmm. the patient. Okay, now we talked about bunions as a serious problem. What other kinds of things do you see? We talked on our last program about diabetic patients. Mm -hmm. What kinds of things do you see from them that are more serious conditions? So when the deformity in the foot and the toes particularly become uh, more advanced, then it become more rigid on the joint. 
So that will start breaking down on the skin itself for diabetic is uh, crucial that they have lack of circulations, lack of uh, sensation. So it's very prone to um, develop d infections. So that's one of the things that we right. want to target to the diabetic population. And we should mention that if a diabetic patient lets this go to an extreme, mm -hmm. there are extreme measures that may need to be taken, including loss of toes or mm -hmm. even uh, in some cases, loss of the whole foot. Am yeah. I correct on yes, that? Yes, yes, absolutely. That is something we always be very serious about when we see pa patient with diabetes and uh, also the amount of how controlled their diabetes uh, would also become a, a key in terms of any sort of healing and be healthy on their feet. Uh, for using the technique of minimal invasive surgery is a very safe, it's well-known safe procedure to, uh, to use this technique to correct the, any deformity mm -hmm. without going through hardware emplacement or sedation um, for the patient when goes for foot surgery. And uh, it's a less complication because the technique itself is actually directly addressed where the deformity problems. Um, uh, and uh, with shorter recovery, that will be something that the patient is always looking forward to. Yes. And, right. and that is helping a lot of patients for non-diabetic and diabetic patients. Now, so the minimally inver invasive surgery procedure is also applicable to the more serious problems as well? And is the recovery time about the same as a person who had a simpler procedure, or how does it differ? Actually, for the severe cases, the deformity will be corrected and the patient is still walking with the same amount of non-severity cases. And that should make a patient who is or a person who is listening that has a condition like this give them encouragement that it can be corrected and that the recovery time is minimal from that standpoint. There may be things that the patient has to do to mm -hmm. recover, but still minimal. Yes, so for this procedure itself, that the patient will be able to walk out the same day and they maintain the activity and walking and ambulation throughout the whole recovery process. I have patient has a severity of bunion hematose, uh, that is uh, require a little bit more of the work that I have to do on my end, but she's or he be able to walk throughout the whole process with no crutches, no walker, or you know even like cane or anything to assist with their walking. Well, that should offer some encouragement to patients who have those conditions. Unfortunately, we are again out of time, Doctor Wen. I want to thank you so much for being here. By way of a conclusion, let's tell everybody feet and beyond where you're located and your websites and all the other what I call vital statistics, okay? Yes, it's feet and beyond of New Jersey. Uh, we on 188 Mountain Avenue. Our phone number is 908-576-0880 and our website is feetandbeyond.com. Right now we have the uh, complimentary consultations uh, offer. Anytime that you have any questions or anything, you can always reach out to us and ask our staff that you heard from WINJ, and we will offer that consultation. Thank you so much for right. being with us. I'm Dave Kelber. We'll see you again very soon. Thank you so much, David. Thank you. To find out more about minimally invasive foot treatment, contact Feet and Beyond at 908-576-0880 or visit feetandbeyond.com.